Hello everyone. Um, I've been a little absent recently. I've been building this uh, new Earthcry live set here, and I realized that this set can really help a lot of people understand follow actions. And so a follow action is something that you can apply to a clip so that the clip will automatically do something um, so that you can navigate a song so that it can free your mind up to do other things, um, such as uh, maybe play an instrument or maybe you want to uh, fiddle around with a filter or you want to just do something else. I think it would be a little bit easier for me to just dive right in and show you what I've got going on. And I'm going to go from from the most basic follow actions to maybe a little bit more complicated follow actions. Um, I'm not going to show you my gear that's sitting around the computer right now because I want you to focus on very specific things, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on this SFX area, okay? I'm going to hit solo so we can just listen to it. In order to, to see your follow actions, you have to make sure that your launch little L button is pressed here, okay? And this is the dialog window for... Um, everything from the trigger mode of your clips all the way to the quantization of them. But let's just focus right here on this little box, the follow action. In a follow action, let's go ahead and read what this says here. A clip's follow action defines what happens to the other clips in a group after a clip plays. A group is defined by clips arranged in successive slots in the same track, okay? So this is, if you look up here, this is a group of clips, okay? These are all just little... Um, I guess you could call them drop sounds or impact sounds. Um, and what I have going on is every single one of these clips has the same follow action. So what it, what the follow action is, is, is the, this is, when you click on this guy, this is the list of follow actions that you can use, okay? Um, each one of these has the any follow action selected, okay? And what the any follow action does is that it will play any one of these clips at random every four bars. So, when I launch this clip, there's our first sound. And what it's going to do is it's going to wait for exactly four bars for the next random clip to play. Okay? So the next random clip happened to be that one. What's fun about follow actions is it shows you the next random clip that's that it's going to hit. So one of the clips that it could play is itself, or it could play any one of these other seven uh, tracks here, okay? So that's just what's happening. Every four bars, we have a different clip playing, okay? And and that's it's fine even if the clip itself isn't is as long as the follow action. Notice how this clip is only two bars long, but it still takes four bars to play the next clip, okay? So let's put this in context. This first scene of this whole song right here plays this. So... So live, this whole section right here is just a loop, okay? You can notice that throughout my set, I've labeled with a little L which ones of these are loops, meaning that if I don't do anything, it's just going to play this clip forever, these the this scene forever. It's just going to keep playing it over and over again. And why would I want that? Well, that's a jam, in my opinion. This is an area of the song where I can take a little time. Maybe I want to make a sequence. Maybe I want to mess around with my filter wiggles. Uh, but that's what that is, okay? When I want the song to continue, I'll launch the next scene, and I've labeled that start. So I'm just going to play this. Meanwhile, the SFX area, this is just going to keep every four bars, it's going to keep playing a random clip, okay? So I can go into my wiggles area, and maybe I want to make a couple wiggles. Okay, so maybe I've done a little bit of that. Now I'm ready to navigate to my next scene, okay? So on this next little drop, I'm gonna move it over right now. Okay, so what's going on now? I've got, this is the main body of the song, okay? This is kind of like the bare bones part of the song, okay? I have a follow action that says, in 32 steps, we're gonna go to the next clip, okay? So as you can see, we're navigating through this this clip. And the next thing that I did is I, I created a, I decided to just go ahead and do this. I put the start and the end of the clip in the section so that I can literally watch. I know it's black, it's kind of hard to see, but I can literally watch 
this go through its section. So I can I can also pay attention to this and know when the next follow action is going to launch. Okay. Now, what else is going on here is I have an instrument. Okay. This. When I launched this, this little instrument selected a different instrument right here, okay? So now I have this uh, growl sound. It's a little hard to hear, but it's supposed to be subtle, okay? So now we're getting down to that 32 count, okay? And watch, all of these are going to, to flip to their next area. Okay, we've still got our <laughs> SFX doing what they do, okay? Each one of these has been programmed, okay, to jump to the next scene, okay? And this one's a little bit faster, we've only got 17 bars until the next scene. But notice that now my instruments, I'm back to my wiggles. Okay. And what's gonna happen is when I go to this next scene, it's another loop, okay? So what that means is that when these next clips launch, that it's gonna be up to me to do the next thing, okay? This is where I've regained control of what's happening in the performance, what's happening in the song, okay? So here we go, this is the next, this is the next scene, okay? So I can do any number of stuff. I can maybe go to my drum kit, okay? Maybe play a beat, maybe record. Right? So it's up to me, remember, it's up to me because this is a loop to launch the next scene, okay? So I'm gonna go to my next scene. One, two. So we're moving on to the next part of the song. So now it's automated again, okay? So what you might be wondering is, Anthony, what's this? Well, this is a, this is a track that's sending MIDI out to an external synthesizer. You can hear the, the modular. I'll do a little wiggle. I'll solo it out. Oh, I'm sorry, it doesn't work if I solo it out. So I hope that you understand what's happening, okay? This is almost done. It's gonna launch the next scene. This is another loop, okay? Another thing I should point out is, just so you understand what's going on, these loops don't have follow actions, right? Whenever it says loop over here, I've, and I've made this note for myself, it's gonna be up to me to launch the next part, okay? So let's say I've jammed out on this little, uh, I made a, a, a drum beat here, a little drum and bass drum beat here. When I'm ready, I need to click on the next part, okay? Because this is a loop. So here we go, this is the next part. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of these other places. You notice that I've written dummy in a couple places. All right, I'm just gonna delete this. This is just a little jam. Now, because this is the intro, I wanted to leave, these are both instruments that I can play as well as this. This is an automated instrument. These are also instruments that I can play. Um, let's, let me see. Let's go ahead and focus on this MIDI out one first, okay? Just focus here. I wanted this to be free in case I wanted to record something. This is a track that's going out to my modular synthesizer, okay? Um, I'll just go ahead and make the input the push live port for now. Um, if I'm looking at this, I can play various notes on my modular. Okay. What I have going on here is is because I wanted this to I wanted this to be free just in case I wanted to make a loop or something. So there's just nothing in there. Here, this next part. Hear that? It's just playing the bass line, right? Okay. Now here. The reason that I have a dummy clip is I want this, I want this uh, MIDI clip to end, okay? Um, and what I've done is I've said in 32 bars, I want you to select the next clip. This clip doesn't have anything in it. It's just a dummy clip. Another move that I could do is I could say in 32 steps, 
go ahead and stop to make this dummy clip completely just useless. But one of the reasons I have it there is because it's just yet another clip for me to look at down at my push to remind me that I'm in the next section, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense to you. It's okay if it doesn't. But, you know, just, just remember, if you wanted to do this and you wanted to have the clip stop, you could just select stop down here from this menu, okay? So another area down here on this drum kit, I have this dummy clip here. So it launches... This is, this, is, uh, this is pretty necessary, actually. When I play this scene, this dummy clip is going to launch, okay? And it's going to do the same thing that the main uh, body of the song does, okay? In 14 bars, it's going to jump to the next clip, okay? I did that on purpose because I... This is a loop. This doesn't, this doesn't matter. I have, to, I have to physically launch this scene in order for the next scene to happen. So this dummy clip is just there to tell the drum kit to play its loop when it moves to the next scene, this next uh, uh, loop, okay? That's why that dummy clip exists. Dummy clips are easy to make. Double click, don't populate it with anything, and just put in a follow action, okay? So um, also I think I should point this out too. If you guys don't know what's going on here, this is my... Uh, huge instrument rack, which I'm going to, uh, for this set, this is a very small amount of instruments, actually. I'm going to fill this up with all kinds of different instruments that I can put into different songs in this set um, so that uh, different, you know, scenes have different instruments that I can play. And none of these instruments are on at the same time. They only, uh, these clips actually automate turning these instruments on and off. If you're curious about how to set that up in your set, I've made a video about that. I'm considering making a different video because I feel like I could explain it even better or faster. But um, for now, I'll go ahead and link that at the bottom. So yeah, y'all, that's that's follow actions. Follow actions can really help you out. I, I highly recommend that you use them. It actually might help you make the jump from being stuck in that arrangement view world where you're always in arrangement view. You have to assemble your sets in, um, every single night by like, you know, moving songs around and, and stuff like that. And it's really, really obnoxious for multiple reasons. A, first of all, you, you can't have fun live when you're, when you're doing that. You just, you're just playing through um, a linear set. There's, there's no part of you that can say, well, I'm done playing this part. I want to launch the next part. Um, this offers a lot of freedom. Um, number two, uh, it, it allows you to really navigate your song and maybe in a non-linear way. Maybe you want to go back or maybe you want to go forward. Maybe you want to skip a part. Maybe you want to um, play it from the end and, and go back to the beginning. Um, being in session view really allows you to do that. And follow actions are the key because there's so many times in a set where you're going to get really involved in what you're doing, some kind of performance, you're playing an instrument and all of a sudden everything's going to stop. And that's, <laughs> that, that's no fun. Okay. Or things are going to loop uh, back to a section that you don't want them to loop to, what follow actions can do and r is really help you navigate the set in an automated way so that you can focus on what you're trying to perform with. Okay? Um, I know this was a little long-winded, but follow actions are really powerful, and I wanted everyone to try to understand them. Okay, so thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Next time. See ya.